Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new. For today's video, I have this makeup look right here. This is going to be my final prom tutorial. It's more of like a natural glam, if you will. We still did liner, we still did lashes, we still did eyeshadow, but it's just not as dramatic. This is gonna be for those people who just aren't into super heavy glam. They don't want something too smoky. This would actually, I think, be really pretty bridal makeup. I could see this for bridal. Keep in mind, you don't have to do a wing if number one, you don't know how to do one, or if you just don't want to do one. I think this makeup would still look very pretty with just liner, even no liner if you don't want to do liner. So this is what I have for you guys today. If you want to see how I got this look, then just keep watching. So for today's video, I'm going to be using the Soft Glam Palette. I'm sorry if you're sick of this palette. I know I just talked about it in my current favorites, but it's truly just one of my favorites right now. And I feel like this is the perfect palette if you're not really into makeup, if you don't know how to do makeup very well, if you need something soft but glam. Okay, corny, I know. I feel like for a look like this where if you're doing your own makeup for prom and you don't really know what you wanna do, you don't want something too heavy, I think this is a very good choice to go with. For my transition, is gonna be this one right here. This is the shade Orange Soda. Typically, I've been liking to go in with Burnt Orange because it's just a little bit deeper, but since we're keeping it just a little more on the natural side, we're gonna go in with this because this is a very light transition shade. So I'm taking this with my Sigma E40 and we're just gonna buff this in the crease. These colors are so incredibly easy to blend. You really don't have to do a lot of work. So you can see I'm doing windshield wiper motions. We're just buffing this in, going back and forth, circular windshield wiper motions just to make sure everything is blended. Since we're going for more wearable glam, I'm not gonna go in and layer tons and tons of eyeshadows because again, this is gonna be something a little more wearable. The next shade I'm gonna take is this one right here. This is the shade Sienna. This is what I used to do when I worked at the salon because I had to have my makeup done, but I was going for like a more daytime, more natural glam. I didn't really care about doing anything too intense. So I would typically just go in with a nice light transition, something that was not too much darker than my skin tone for my transition. And then I would go in with a color like this and then put something on the lid and mascara and call it a day. Taking this, by the way, with my Sigma E25 brush. This is one of my favorite brushes to go in if I wanted to bump up the crease a little more if I'm going in and defining the crease but still want it to be diffused. I always go in with this brush. I love this brush. When I go in and lay down the color, I keep my eye open and kind of buff it in, but then I like to close it and just make sure it's blended into the crease and it's not too low on the lid, but it's also not too high up, whereas it's gonna cover up that first transition shade that we laid down. That was such a tongue twister. I had seriously had to say that like five times. <laughs> I'm taking Cypress Umber. This is the deepest brown in the palette. I'm taking my BH Cosmetics brush. This is the number 17. I talked about this in my current favorites video. This brush only comes in a set of three other brushes, but you, I believe the whole entire set is $7 or $8, and BH Cosmetics always has sales. So you can usually get it on sale, but Morphe makes a brush, I believe it's the M. 514, if I'm not mistaken, uh, that's very similar. It's just a little bit longer. Keeping my eye open because I don't want this to cover up Sienna, I'm gonna lay the product in the crease. Because this brush is so small and it's so precise, it's just gonna lay it right exactly where I want it. But the thing I love about this brush is it also blends at the same time. So I don't have to go in with another brush additionally and blend out the product. So I kind of laid down the line. It looks really messy because it is. I like to go in with my eye open because I like to make a guide for myself. And then I'll go in and just kind of intensify or define or do, you know, just pretty much whatever I feel like I need to do. For example, right now, my eye just looks a little too dark. I'm, I'm missing something. So I feel like compared to this eye, I can see a little more red on this eye. I can see a little bit more of the orange soda color. They don't look even to me. I feel like I put a little bit too much of the cypress umber. So I'm gonna take my fluffy brush and I'm gonna diffuse the color as much as I can. I know I said that that brush blends out shadow and it does, but I need the color to be a little less Harsh. I put a little too much cypress umber. It's a little too dark for me right now So this brush is just gonna diffuse the color. It's gonna make it look a little bit lighter It's gonna make it look a little more uh, Soft I can still see just a little more red on this side So I'm gonna go back in with Sienna. That was the second shade that I used with my e25 brush 
cap off the excess and then I'm just gonna take this and put it right where I laid it down. I'm just reinforcing it because I lost a little bit of the red. I wanna see a little bit more. I'm gonna go back in with the orange soda. I'm just gonna add a little bit of that. That's it. So sometimes you do have to go in with layers. I know like especially for beginners, makeup seems like it's so complicated, but if it's something that you enjoy and you love doing, it's okay to take your time. I know these are a lot of steps and yes, it does take time. It takes a lot of time to do eyeshadow. For me, event makeup on myself, I'm going to a party, wedding, I wanna look exceptional. I can easily spend 45 minutes on my eyes. Yes, that's a very long time, I know, but at the same time, you know, you don't have to do this every single day. You could just do this for a special occasion, like I said. I am going to carve out my lid. You can totally skip the step. You can just go in with your lid color and just pack it on with a brush. This is the brush I'm gonna use today. It's more of a precise lid brush, so you can just kind of go in and pack it on. You don't have to clean it up, but I kind of want the lid to stand out just a little bit better. So I'm taking some uh, Studio, no, not Studio Fix. This is Pro Longwear from MAC. I have the shade NC20, and I'm taking this Morphe brush. This is an M4. Two, one for something like this where I want this lid color to just stand out I want it to be crisp. This is the brush I like to go in and carve out with I like to look straight into the mirror and see where my eye folds so see my eye folds right here So I'm gonna go a little bit above my crease my eyes are a little bit hooded I like to make my eyes look a little bit bigger. So I like to go just a little bit more above my crease I'm also gonna just take my finger and kind of tap out the concealer. If you go in with too heavy of a hand or you go in with just like a big glob of concealer, it can crease because it's just too much product underneath the shadow. You can set this if you want to. I'm not gonna set it because I am going in with a shimmer color on the lid. I want it to stand out. I'm gonna take the shade right here. It's this really pretty champagne golden shade. I'm taking this with a Sigma. This is a firm shader. I think I always call it a flat shader. It's a firm shader. This is the E57, one of my favorite brushes to go in and apply my lid color with. So what I'm gonna do is just take my time and pack this on the lid. This color is really gonna stand out because number one, we laid down that concealer to help grab the product. So it's gonna stand out from that. Because we carved out the lid, that's also gonna help us stand out even more. I'm gonna go back in with my BH Cosmetics brush and just kind of run this just to soften it a little bit because I feel like it's a little harsh. Like it could be just a little bit softer. That's it. So next, let's just go ahead and move on to the liner. That's actually it for the shadow besides the brow bone highlight, but we'll come back and do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this part off camera because um, I just have to get up in the mirror. I'm just gonna go ahead and do my liner and actually lashes off camera because you guys have seen me do lashes 8 million times. But for my lashes, I went in with the Ardell Studio Effects. These are in the number 231. These are just like, I feel like a nice natural like wispy lash that is really gonna complement the makeup that we have on today, especially since since it's a more natural glam. So I'm gonna do that off camera and then I'll be right back and we'll finish the face. Do any of you guys love these? These are the best. Anyways, I'm gonna take the Benefit Professional to prime my face. This doesn't really keep me that matte. I only use this primer if I'm not wearing my makeup for a long time because I am just so oily. This isn't a mattifying primer, so I'm not blaming it on the primer whatsoever, but I just need something a little more mattifying. I've actually never used this on my entire face. I've only always used it in my T-zone, but I'm gonna try it on my whole face today. Why? The heck not. For foundation, I'm going in just with the same foundation I've been loving lately. It's the Laura Mercier. This is 2W1. It's just a smidge too light for me. To help make it a little bit darker, I'm gonna go in with the Physician's Formula foundation. This is a healthy foundation, and I love this foundation. This is in the shade MW2. So I usually do about three pumps of Laura Mercier, and then I do, actually that's a pretty generous dab. It might be a little too dark, but we can go in and like extra highlight just to um, kind of balance it out. So I like to take this on the back of my hand and I mix these two suckers together. So the Laura Mercier foundation is quite matte. So I like to work in sections when I work with this foundation because it doesn't dry too terribly fast, but sometimes a bitch gets sidetracked. So I like to do sections and I'm taking my Eco Tool sponge, which I love right now. I'm just gonna pounce this out on my face.
Okay. I'm gonna take my MAC Pro Longwear. I'm so sad, I'm almost out of this concealer. I feel like I've had it for so long that I just need to finish it at this point. This is in the shade MC20. Also, I'm noticing the light is flickering in the background. It's not the light, I think it's my camera lens. So please just bear with me through that. I don't know why it's doing that, I just noticed it right now, but hopefully it's not too distracting. But anyways, the way that I like to use this concealer is actually with my fingers. I like to dab it under my eyes first with my with my chubby little fingertip, and then I go in and blend it out with the sponge. But I did notice that when I started doing this with this concealer, because I remember I kind of had a hard time with it blending when it was very new to me way back in the day, but um, I noticed when I started doing that, it works a lot better. It just blends out a lot better in my opinion. So then after I kind of warm it up with my hands, I like to go in and blend it out with my sponge. This sponge is perfect if you angle out your outer V or you have a wing, gets up there and kind of like sharpens it. With whatever I have left over on my sponge, I just like to take it on my chin and I'll take it down the center of my nose. I'm gonna go in with Essence Brighten Up Banana Powder. I'm taking this with my e.l.f. blush brush. I'm actually not gonna use MAC Emphasize today even though I really just wanna do a little kiss of it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm just gonna tap out the creases, make sure I'm not setting any creases. More importantly, I'm gonna go in with this powder. This is the Cover FX Blotting Powder. I have the shade Light. I believe they have light, medium, and dark, but because I am pasty, I'm gonna use the light shade. I'm taking this with my Sonia Kashuk. This is the number 130 brush. This is my favorite powder brush ever. I don't like to go in too heavy with this product because it is very, very matte. If you go in too heavy with it, you can look very cakey. I've made that mistake many times before, so I always take just like a very light amount on my brush and just really take my time pressing it into the skin, making sure that it's not too heavy handed for this part because that powder brush is so big. I take this brush, this is a BH Cosmetics V17. This is in the Flawless Face Set. And this just fits perfectly. Look at that, just right there in the center. Before I got this brush, I would just go in with my regular powder brush. I would always just like smudge away some of my brows and I was constantly going in and retouching them and I was like, why do I do my brows first if I always mess them up when I powder my face? So I love to use this brush for that. Ever since I got this brush, I've been using it to set my eyeshadow primer with a a uh, translucent shade and then I always use it to just like do a little powder detail work. We're gonna do Kat Von D as usual. This is Petal. This is just like my favorite baking powder. I love this powder. I feel like it's just so brightening but I kind of am intrigued to try a new one. I'm interested in trying new ones but I don't know what to try. I wanted to try the Patrick's powder but um, I couldn't get my hands on it and then I just kind of forgot about it. And now I think Hourglass came out with a new one that I heard is really good. I kind of want to try that too, but Hourglass is so expensive. I don't know if I'm willing to spend the money on it if I'm just going to use it for my under eyes. You know what I mean? Moving on to bronzer, I'm going to take the Butter Bronzer of Coas because I love this. I'm going to be taking my BH Cosmetics brush that I just mentioned in my last video and we're just going to warm up this face. I actually dropped it and that's why that's there, but I am pretty much almost done. This is this will probably last me just a little bit, maybe like a month or two and then she will be gone. Next what I'm gonna do is take matte gold deposit. I also mentioned this in my last video. I'm very shamelessly promoting the last video that I did because if you guys didn't see my last video, it's a current favorites that I've been loving. So these are all my current favorites. I actually just filmed that video like two days ago and they're obviously still my current favorites. So I'm using a lot of the things that I talked about in that video because they're just my favorites at the moment. So what I've been doing with this is just taking this on my forehead because this is so shimmery, you can definitely overuse this. I like to take this just around the perimeter of my face. We're just gonna keep it moving on to contour. I just love this combination right now and it's uh, these two right here. I think this is Sculpt. 
and this is toffee. I know this is toffee, but I, I think this is sculpt. Let's check. Yeah, this is sculpt. So you can see there's definitely a difference. This is very warm and then this is very cool. It's just the perfect contour for me at least. So I've just been taking two dabs of each, tapping off the excess with my Real Techniques contour brush. And then we're gonna lay it down and just kind of hollow out the cheekbones. But I feel like these two together just look miraculous. I love the way they look and this is what I've been using for um, like about the last month or so. This has been the only one I've been using. With whatever is left over on the brush, I just brush it up into the temples just to make sure everything is kind of connected. I just haven't been into a super heavy contour lately. I'm more into uh, pretty makeup, if that makes sense. That's what I've been into lately. I haven't really been into like the Instagram makeup where everything is just like cut crease and glitter and wing liner and bold brows. It's just, I don't know. I'm just, I'm not so into it on myself anymore like I used to be, if that makes sense. I've kind of really been into like a lot more minimalistic than what I used to do, if that makes sense. Like I know I still wear a lot of makeup, that's not what I'm trying to say, but even just as cutting things down, like not contouring so heavily and not doing a wing liner and not doing the super dramatic bold Instagram brows. It's just not really my thing anymore. This is like one of my favorite blushes from the drugstore. This is the Essence Satin Touch Blush and this is in the shade Satin Love. It's just a really pretty rosy color. I'm just going to very lightly dust this on the cheeks. I like to keep my blush kind of back because I had definitely have a rounder face and when I bring blush onto the apples of my cheeks, it makes my face look a little more round. I always do this no matter what. I like to take my original bronzer brush with nothing on it and I just kind of like to run it across my face. I just feel like it helps mesh everything together. To highlight, I'm going to be using the combination that I've been using lately. We're going to do Anastasia and um, Reezy with a little bit of ColourPop Nomi and oh, man, I just love this highlight, you guys. I'm not taking it down as low onto the face. I'm just kind of keeping it back and then with whatever I have left over, I'm just gonna kinda hit above the brow just to add a little bit of a glow. And then I love to highlight my chin. I think it looks so pretty. I'm gonna go down the bridge of the nose. Then we'll hit the tip. And then we're gonna go in with Nomi. I love, 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 love this. I was not expecting to love a loose highlighter as much as I love this. I'm just taking what's in the lid and I'm just going to hit, oh yes, do you see how it just bumps up your highlight? I'm just going to hit just the very high points of my cheekbone, just right there. We're going to do some rose water spray. This helps settle every single layer of cake. All those products you put on your face, this makes it look very natural, very lit from within. It just settles into the skin beautifully. What should we do for the lower lash line? I think I wanna keep it kind of simple. Since this is supposed to be a little more wearable, I think I just wanna keep it very simple. So what I'm gonna do is take, I'm gonna take Burnt Orange. I'm gonna take this with my BH number 17 brush. Just gonna sweep this on the lower lash line. I'm gonna take my Amrezy highlighter. I'm gonna take my little Eco Tools brush. Just pop this in the inner corner. And then I'm just gonna take that same brush and just go right under the arch of my brow. I did a little bit of lower lash mascara off camera and then we're gonna move on to lips, which is the final step of this look. I did this combination over the weekend and it looked so stunning, so I'm gonna do it again for this video. I'm gonna be taking Anastasia Strip. This is a liquid lipstick and then I'm gonna be going in with Marc Jacobs Sugar Sugar on top. It looked amazing, if I do say so myself, so that's what we're gonna do today. This is the 
finished look. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you took the time to watch this video out of your day, it just means the world to me. Just know that it is always appreciated. Also, let me know what else you guys wanna see in the comments below. I always love to hear suggestions from you guys. If you guys wanna see specific videos, let me know and I will be more than happy to do those videos. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you give me a thumbs up before you go. Make sure you subscribe before you leave. You already know the drill. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Just a little lick, please. Just a little. Thank you. Oh, why can't every day be just this good? How come they don't make music like this anymore? You guys ever get to the point in your life where you think you should be a professional lip singer? If there was a market for professional lip singing, I think I would just be the best lip singer ever. Like, I would be so good. So good. I'm gonna start that. I just decided. Sometimes I wonder what I'm doing with my life.